This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. And I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive as I'm taught the Word of God. My life has changed for the better and I will never be the same again. Amen. You may be seated. We have been in Mark chapter 5 for a few weeks. Mark chapter 5, verse 24, or 20, 25. And the message in the series, How to Write Your Own Ticket with God. People don't believe that's true, but it is true. And uh, I'm studying right now for the Holy Week Revival 2019. And I came across a quote from Kenneth Hagin. And he said, people don't have more than they have because they haven't believed God for more. And I think maybe that's an answer to how Sue and I got so far down the road. We just believe God for more. Somebody might take offense and say, well, you're already the guy with five talents that Jesus gave five more to. You ought to calm down and not believe God for any more. Nope, nope, nope. I was up this morning early and I was out there stomping around in the cold and I'm believing God. Amen. The day I go to be with the Lord or the day the rapture happens, I will have got up that morning and I'll be out believe in God. Amen. 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 See, Jesus said, have faith in God. You go over there to the book of Hebrews and Paul writes that without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, people don't say it to me anymore because they know what my response is going to be. But 20, 25 years back, people would say, well, I'm not really into that faith stuff. And I would say, well, I'm really sorry to hear you're not into pleasing God. Then I'd quote what Hebrews says, without faith it is impossible to please him. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And people don't want to believe that, of course, in this communist millennial generation. Everybody thinks that uh, everybody's going to heaven no matter how they live and everybody's going to have a McMansion on the same row, on the same block, and every reward's going to be the same. Well, if you would just open your eyes and look at how the master architect and engineer designed the earth, you would know that's not the case. Amen? Amen. Because one person plants tomatoes and their next door neighbor plants tomatoes, but maybe one tills the earth better, or maybe one irrigates better, or maybe one uses fertilizer more efficiently. Nobody, no two people anywhere, anytime get identical results. Right. We get differing results and we can try and legislate something different but the fact is the master architect and engineer of the universe designed it the way it is today so we can kick against the bricks the king james says but it won't change anything so i've just decided to take the word of god as i find it and run up the score before my time on the field comes to an end Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm really looking forward to getting my million dollar, our million dollar challenge offering commitment paid off because then I can do what that couple said. They turn around and made another commitment. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you what, there's nothing as wonderful as seeing God move. Just this week, I got another miracle. It was crazy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, it was like crazy. So, Stuff is happening. I mean, when somebody walks in the building and they get healed, something is happening. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I want in on it. Amen. Tell the neighbor on the other side, I want in on it. Amen. Mark 5, 25, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said... 
If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole and straightway. The fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? Now, there was a multitude, but how many got healed? One. And we pointed out two weeks ago that the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, they lived in Jesus' day when God himself, Emmanuel, God himself was on the planet, and what did they get out of Jesus? Nothing. So you don't need 100,000 people to get their miracle for you to get a miracle. You could be the only person and get a miracle. Amen. I mean, that gal that got healed Friday night, I haven't heard another testimony. I don't know that she was the only one that got healed, but she got healed. Amen. Say it out loud. If only one's going to get healed, gonna I'm going to be the one. Somebody might say, well, that's selfish. No, it's not, because God is so big, he can heal everybody that just said that. Amen. It's an attitude, expectation, anticipation, enthusiasm, and excitement. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee. And sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith. Daughter, thy faith. We said last Wednesday night and the Wednesday night previous that you ought to develop your own faith. It's a weakling. It's a baby Christian that is always dependent on the other person's faith. I've been saying it all of these years, and people do not pay attention. But you need to find something, some way to believe God, and find out how it works. People don't do this. They, they go decades, and they count on us, or they count on other ministers. They get in healing lines. I'm not criticizing getting in a healing line. They ask others to pray for them. I'm not criticizing asking others to pray for you. But the problem is, if we live our lives and never find out for ourselves how it works, then there's going to come a time, maybe, something's going to come up, and we're not, we're, we are going to absolutely have no idea how to receive from the Lord. Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. So we've been saying that if anybody, anytime, will take these four steps or put these four principles into operation, they will always receive whatever they want from the Lord Jesus Christ or from Father God. You can literally write your own ticket with God. Number one, say it. What is the first step this woman took? What is the first thing she did? Mark 5, 28, for she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. For she said... So the first thing she did is she said it. Step number one is say it. And it came to pass. You can have what you say. You can write your own ticket with God. And the first step in writing your own ticket with God is say it. Number two, do it. Step number one, say it. Step number two, do it. She took action. Did you notice in the praise report from the college student, that phrase that the college student used, take no, he used the phrase action steps. A lot of people in 2018, they'll actually avoid a church that talks about action. They don't want to take any action. Well, if you have that attitude, you let 20, 30 years go by, you're not going to have anything not in the natural and not in the spirit. It's all about action. Again, I take you back to the master architect and engineer who designed this planet and designed the system of faith that we operate in. If a farmer sits on his porch, smokes dope, waits for his welfare check, how big a harvest is he going to have? How big a harvest is he going to have? He's not going to have a harvest. In fact, I'm just going to leave it up to God. Yeah, you're going to have a field full of weeds. 
I don't know about you, but when I leave my yard up to God, the devil takes over and it goes to heck because he is the God, little G-O-D, of this earth. We know this from Paul's writings. This is temporary, but it is the current situation. Yes. Amen. Amen. Then on the other hand, the next door neighbor farmer, he's diligent, he gets up, he plows, he sows, he uh, irrigates, he fertilizes, he has a great big crop. See, in 2018, the, the dope head, the mope, He's going to be out protesting, burning flags, you know, uh, rioting with a, uh, uh, a sack on his head and, and doing all kinds of political stuff to protest the, the guy next door that's got the big harvest. Well, you can protest all you want. But protesting doesn't bring in a harvest. Amen. Amen. Whining, crying, complaining doesn't bring in a harvest. Amen. The master engineer and architect who designed the earth and who designed the system of faith is the same one that put Adam in the garden to work it. Amen. I remember we got married, Sue was just horrified. There were two things in the Bible I knew she didn't know. She was just horrified to discover both. One was, the Bible says, to mind your own business. I mean, I had to take her to the Word and show her this is biblical. The Bible teaches to mind your own business. And then the second one is she was just horrified that I believed that we would be working in eternity. Everywhere you look in the Word of God, God's got man working. And then it says, we shall rule and reign with Christ. You can't rule and reign with Christ if you don't show up at your J-O-B to rule and reign. Amen. 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 Say it out loud, work is God's plan. Is God's Taking, plan. Action is Taking action is God's plan. Taking action, Taking action is, directly is directly proportional to results received. It wouldn't have done this woman any good to say, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole, if she had not then done it and taken action on it. Your actions defeat you or your actions put you over. According to your action will you receive, and by your inaction you are kept from receiving. Mark 5, 28, for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And then she acted on that. She took action on that. She acted on what she had said. She said it and she did it and praise God, she received it. Step number one, say it. Step number two, do it. And we've been hovering the last couple of weeks on this third one, receive it because this is where we have a challenge, frankly. Here it is, this is it. Verse 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt she had been healed of that plague. She received her healing in that moment. Now the word felt can mislead us. It's the Greek word gnosko, which means to come to know, to ascertain, to realize, and I like this definition, to experientially know. It's not just felt, because we actually need to get out of the realm of walking by feelings, because Paul writes that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. And so you just have to realize, and I'll tell you what, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm really thrilled that I'm getting this thing down. I am. You know, the Lord told me in 1988, after we got the building built up there on I-30, moved in, he told me to, that uh, he wanted me to exercise, and he told me to walk four miles a day, every day from that day forward. So I, I just did what he said. Action steps. And since then, I've walked 45,000 miles in obedience to what I heard one day in prayer. I wonder how come pastor's blessed. Just do everything he tells you to do. Amen. Well, I can't. He didn't tell me to climb Mount Everest. 
He didn't say, if you'll climb Mount Everest, you'll be saved. The Lord, how many of you can at least agree on this, the Lord's intelligent? Amen. Well, if the Lord's intelligent, He's not going to tell you something you can't do. Amen. Amen. So if you walk 45,000 miles, trust me, you might have some creaks. You might, you might have part of your body complaining. But I tell you what, teaching this series, for, I'm glad you're here. But if, you, if all of you boycotted me, I'd still be here listening to these messages because I'm getting something out of it. Amen. 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 I walked out the front door yesterday. I got back from prayer and uh, then went out to pray some more. I walked out the front door. My right foot was hurting me. I just lifted my hand. I said, thank you, Father God, because I have mountain moving, seed in the ground, nothing impossible faith. I release my faith and declare and decree that my right foot is completely healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Two or three more steps and it, it, I didn't feel anything. I'm getting it down, brother. I said, I'm getting it down. And I've learned this. The faster I release my faith, then the less opportunity Satan has to squat some of y'all own rent properties, and you know if you got a squatter, you'd like to just take a 357 and get them out of there. Well, there's a little more involved. You got to go to court. You got to do a lot of stuff. So job number one is don't let the devil in the door in the first place. Amen. And when something is amiss in your body or your home or your money, instantly, don't wait three days, instantly stop and release your faith, and step number one is what? Say it. Say it. Step number one is what? Say it. Say it. We have not understood who we are. We have not understood what Jesus did for us. We have not understood that we are not victims. We have not understood that we are the sons and daughters of God right now. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Some translations say, power has gone out from me. Now remember, he said, daughter, thy faith hath healed you. So by her faith, she pulled power out of him. She received. Say it, do it, receive it. The, the woman, first of all, said it. She confessed her faith. Then she acted upon that faith and reached out and touched the master. Then number three, she received. And that's where we have the issue. That's why we're hovering right here for a couple of weeks. She received. I don't know about you, but I want to learn how to do a better job receiving. Amen. Say it out loud. I want to do a better job, a better job. Receiving. receiving. And immediately felt sensed, knew, ascertained, experientially knew she was healed in her body. Notice that the healing and the feeling followed the saying and the doing. Most folks want the feeling and the healing first, and then they'll do the saying and the doing. But it doesn't work that way because that wouldn't be faith. That would be reporting. First of all, you have to have the saying and the doing, and then you'll have the feeling and the healing. Saying and doing precede healing and feeling. If you wanted to get to where the power was back then, you had to get to where Jesus was. That's why she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. There was no other God at work on the earth anywhere except where Jesus was. That's why she took action on what she said, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. If you wanted to get to where the power was then, you had to get to where Jesus was, but here's what we have missed. Today, everybody say today. today. All you have to do is reach out in faith and receive it, because for the new creation in Christ, for the believer, power is everywhere present at all times. Amen. We haven't seen it, but we're seeing it now. Say it out loud. For the believer, for the, believer, for the new creation in Christ, creation. Power, power is everywhere present, everywhere present all the time. All the time. 
That's why Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I send you what things serve you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Say it out loud. Power, Power. is always present Power. everywhere for the believer. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, For where two or three, are there two or three gathered here today? Where two or three are gathered together in my name? Are there two or three gathered here right now in his name? Yes. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. Well, are you saying Jesus is here? Because, you know, there's a lot of churches and good churches and they're, they're doing services right now by his spirit. He is here. Now think about this. Jesus said, I only do, I only say what I hear my father do or what I hear my father say. So he just acted out what the father told him to do or what he heard the father say. He was God at work on the earth then. But now <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is God at work on the earth and the Holy Spirit has an advantage. That's why Jesus said, it's good for you that I go away because if I don't go away, I can't send my spirit. Yes. See, he could only be in one place at one time. But now by his spirit, he can be, and he is everywhere all the time Amen. until the parousia of the, the, the church, the coming of the Lord, and then he that restraineth evil shall be taken out of the earth. Man, you think it's bad now? Wait until the Holy Spirit leaves. You think public schools are bad now? You think government's a mess now? Wait until the Holy, wait until millions upon millions of genuine Christians are, that are praying for the United States of America and for world peace and all the rest are removed from the earth. You don't want to be here. It'll be zombie land. Power is always everywhere present for the believer. There's power at work in this room right now. But if we don't perceive it, if we don't receive it, it will do us no good at all. I thought about bringing a blow dryer and just walking up here like a madman. You know, how come my blow dryer won't work? How come my blow dryer won't work? Well, fool, plug it in. <laughs> I mean, in every room, in every place in America, there are electrical outlets. And it does, you could have a perfectly good vacuum cleaner, you could have a perfectly good television set, you could have a perfectly good blow dryer, but if you don't have the, the, the sense to plug it in the wall and hit the switch to on, it ain't going to work. But that does, not de that does not negate the fact that the power's there. And people really get upset about this. They really get upset about this. I actually had a minister sit me down at Steak and Ale up by Six Flags one day, and he said, the pie is only so big. And he said, when you get a bigger piece of the pie, that leaves less pie for the rest of us. And I told him, I ain't serving no God that is a God of a pie. I said, the God I'm serving does not run out. There's not just X much. He doesn't run out. So whether you are in agreement or not, or whether you're offended or not, I'm just going to keep believing God and mashing the accelerator and believing God for everything I can lay a hold of by faith. And if you don't have enough faith to believe God can do the same for you, well, that's your issue, brother. I want to hear about pies. <laughs> Shout it like thunder. My God, My God is able. Do a better job. Shout it like thunder. My God is able. My God is able. And actually the opposite is true. What one man can do, another man can do. What one person can believe God for, everybody can believe God for. Because he shows favoritism to no one. He is, God is a respecter of no person. So he doesn't have favorites. 
And I know, I know, I know, people want to think, well, you know, so-and-so got so far down the road because they're one of God's favorites. We don't want to accept responsibility is our problem that you are sitting here this morning, the sum total of everything you have said and everything you have done and everything you have believed. And if you don't like what you got, you got to back up and you got to change what you're saying and you got to change what you're doing and you got to change what you're believing. Pastor, it can't be that simple. It is. And don't you for one moment subscribe to the nuttiness of this world out here. Amen. This week on my birthday, we went and uh, what do they call that scan? Huh? <coughs> Ultrasound. And see what my latest grandbaby is. Well, it didn't have some equipment, but... It had ovaries. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what they say at Harvard. I don't care what these idiot scientists have to say. I mean, how can somebody be a scientist and say uh, it's not alive? In fact, they turned the sound on. I heard the heart beating. Amen. And it, that's not a baby. Fool. I, I saw her suck her thumb. But some of you all vote for people that are in favor of cutting that into pieces. And then you wonder how come, I wonder how come God doesn't answer my prayers. Well, you can't be pro-murder and expect God to answer your prayers. Somebody might say, Pastor, you'll hurt church attendance. Well, I noticed the place is full. We don't have any murderers here. Amen. So you, if you parrot the world, if, if you have their vomit coming out of your mouth, you're not going to receive from the Lord. No, they're not born that way. It's a boy or it's a girl. It's not a fetus, it's a baby. I'm telling you, you sabotage yourself when you get the world's vomit coming out of your mouth. Say what God says. On every topic. Now, now there are times, you know, you might just be quiet and not say what God says. Because there are certain words really set the world off. They don't want to hear about hell. You know, they don't want to hear about gluttony. You know, some things, you know, some words, maybe just keep to yourself. Amen. Amen. But don't let the world's vomit come out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. And in the privacy of your home. You can teach those children the Word of God. Amen? Amen? That power is everywhere present. Just like there are electrical outlets here, and I can plug in, I can plug in whatever I want to plug in, whatever appliance I want to plug in, I can plug in, and I can turn it on. Glory to God. Now, I, I can't see it. I can't see electricity in the room, but it's here. I can't see TV waves in the room, but they're here. I can't see radio waves in the room, but they're here. So the, the problem is not that the power of God is not present. The problem is we have not learned how to tune in, dial in, plug in, and receive what we need. Man, I'm out there this morning praying. Full moon, how magnificent is your name in all the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, when it's 45 degrees and the wind's blowing and you got, you know, you got all your clothing on and you're cold and you're out there praying, he's out there. If you get cold and go inside and pray, he's in there. 
I mean, if you're here this morning, He's here wherever you are. Amen. 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 He is everywhere present all the time for the believer and the new creation in Christ. Acts 17, 28, Paul preaching in Athens said, for in Him we live and move and have our being. So it looks like I'm surrounded by what we call air. Well, guess what? I'm also surrounded by the grace of God. I'm surrounded by the mercy of God. I'm surrounded by the love of God. I'm surrounded by the forgiveness of God. I'm surrounded by the prosperity of God. I'm surrounded by the healing power of God. In Him, I live and move and have my being. So why would I let doubt come out of my mouth or sickness come out of my mouth or not enough come out how can I stand in the presence of God and let anything come out of my mouth contrary to what God has said in him say it out loud in him we live and move and have our being I don't have to go somewhere to find him I don't have to go somewhere to get a prayer answer Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be at a stoplight and take the moment, redeem the time, make your declaration of faith. If we just knew this and how to tap into it, there would never be any sick among us. In this room right now, there is power to heal every sickness. In this room right now, there is power to deliver from every infirmity. In this room right now, there is power to deliver from everything that binds or hinders or hurts. If you're here this morning and bound by porn, there's power here to set you free. If you're here this morning and bound by drugs, prescription or illegal, doesn't matter. There's power right now to set you free. You can be free. You don't have to wait. You don't have to go somewhere. You don't have to wait for something to happen. You can reach out and receive the power of God that you need right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of the Lord is present for the healing of the sick. I said the power of the Lord is present for the healing of the sick. I said the power of the Lord is present for the healing of the sick. Hallelujah. I said the power of the Lord is present for the healing of the sick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Spirit the power of God is all around us all the time. All I got to do is receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, gotta, I have to live my life more in tune with God and less in tune with the world. Yeah, but it hurts. Speak to it. I'm 63 years old. Stuff hurts. I just speak to it. Amen. 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 I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I stand before you. I got no pain in my body. I take no pills, take no drugs. The only drug I'm on is that uh, Sue Lingerfeld drug. And I'm telling you, I, I've, been, I've been high for 42 years now. Amen. And I ain't coming off of that drug. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In him, we live and move and have our being. God is here now. The healing power of God is here now. The delivering power of God is here now. The saving power of God is here now. Hallelujah. Oh, my God is right. Amen. Amen. What, what's coming out of our mouth? There's somebody here this morning, they, there was a challenge with a child. A few months back, they uh, surprised the heck out of me, come up to me in the fellowship atrium holding this child. Just say, they said, just say the words, man of God. Just say the words, Amen. and she'll be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Doesn't have that problem anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. 
See, we want to cry. We want to whine. We want to talk like the world talks. We want to look it up online. What's wrong with me? I'll tell you what's wrong with you, a lack of faith. Hallelujah. I don't need to look it up. I don't need to go get an analyzed. I don't need a picture taken of it. I don't need to hear what the world's got to say about it. I can take it to my daddy. Hallelujah. In him, I live, I move, and I have my being. Hallelujah. And because I'm a believer, thank God I'm not a doubter. The power of God is present all the time for the meeting of my need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Thank you, Lord, for enriching me. Glory. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, rather than whine and cry and complain, if we lift our mouth and lift up our hands and give glory to God, the anointing of God would come down, glory to God, and every, every oppression of the devil would flee, and every symptom in our body would go, glory to God, and then we'd get ideas, we'd get ideas, we'd know what to do with our money, we'd get ideas, we'd know where to go get a better job, or, or how to do better on the job we got, hallelujah. we get some Holy Ghost ideas, then we put action to those ideas. Well, I'm just believing God that, that, that my, my, my check will go up in January. <laughs> well, you just enjoy your, your double wide for, from now to the duration. And you may very well be in your double wide with the Antichrist. Not me. I get ideas and I take action. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. The Lord is my shepherd, Lord is my shepherd. and I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, and I lack no good thing. The Lord is my shepherd, and he leads me into green pastures. The Lord is my shepherd, and he leads me beside the still waters. He's not going to lead you into the ditch. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. He's not going to lead you into the ditch. Hallelujah. 